All right, what up and welcome back. I'm Jane, the plainest Jane, and I serve syrup in the form of black news and celebrity updates. Everybody come on in. This is gonna be a bit of a heavy show, um, an informative show. Um, and it it's a little unsettling, but you know, it is a part of life, and I think that there is a conversation to be had. So we've got lots of updates to go over pertaining to Wendy Williams. Y'all grab a seat. And let's get ready. Hey, thanks for letting me keep you connected and in the know with what's happening in the black world. Don't forget to smash on that like button for support and for more black news. So listen, y'all know things are always sticky in Hollywood and in real life. I cover these topics here on this channel. We talk about things going on in the black celebrity world primarily and also things going on in the real world. And this is something that I think really peddles both, you know, this Wendy Williams is a Hollywood icon. She's a mogul. She's a trailblazer. She did things that anybody who is behind a microphone, whether it be a YouTube channel, whether it be a podcast, whether it be on TikTok, and especially if you're a woman, Wendy Williams paved the way for us. And I just want to make that clear before we get into any of the updates that we get into. So without further ado, listen, Wendy Williams has been diagnosed with two new ailments and her niece is speaking out ahead of the documentary release, which is set to be um, this Saturday. It's latest to release February 24th, part one and February 25th, part two. And there are a lot of things that I really want to discuss. Um, one clip that I'm going to show is really disheartening. It actually brought me to tears when I first watched it. So I wanted to bring it to you and listen. Um, Wendy Williams has dished hot topics over the years, oftentimes leaving no celebrity unscathed. But fast forward to today, Wendy herself is the hot topic. Yet again, this isn't her first time being a hot topic. And um, in a really, I, I want to call it a turn of events, but it really has just been a uh, a slow, a, a slow slope getting to where we are. So in this video, as you all come on in, come on in, please be sure to share this video with someone. Please take a second to also hit the subscribe button so that you don't miss out on any of the syrup that I dish over here revolving around celebrities and um, also just real world viral topics and trending topics. Um, like I said, in this video, we're going to get into Wendy Williams' niece, the limited contact that Wendy Williams has strangely between her and her family, where she is now. Um, a friend that Wendy Williams has been friend with that I think a lot of us really didn't know about. Um, we're also going to hear what her niece had to say. It's about an eight minute clip of her niece really speaking out and letting us know where Wendy is or where she isn't. Um, and really breaking down all things that we found out with the two new ailments and everything else surrounding her health, her wellness, and what, what we can expect from Wendy moving forward. Okay. I hope that all of you all are having an amazing day. This 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 is a bit of of of, of a heavy video, right? Everyone everyone grows old. At least we, we can all hope that we grow old one day, right? And these are things that some um you know some people face. So um I think it's interesting to watch and it's something that definitely needs to be talked about. So listen. Um, as you come on in, um, I'm going to play the intro. Please be sure that you support the stream in any way you can support the channel. Okay. There are a lot of different ways you can do so. Hit thumbs up, subscribe, you can send a cash app, appreciated, not required. Okay. Or you can join the membership. We have a blast backstage behind the paywall. Okay. Come on in, drop some pancakes in the chat and let's get into breaking down all things Wendy Williams today. The plain is Jane. This is one of my favorite comments here. She says, I love me some black. And she said, loves me some <laughs> black news. She says, is it just me or does anyone else get tired of seeing people that don't look like them delivering info about them day in and day out? All right, so let's go ahead and get right into it. I'm going to start with the press release. I think that that's really important. Um, a lot of people uh, use the articles that were written based on the press release, right? People Magazine, I think, was one of the first outlets to uh, release something yesterday pertaining to her estranged family and, and where she is and things of that nature. And today, 
it was literally today.com, you know, the outlet today. But I want to go directly to the press release so that we can get it from the horse's mouth, um, so to speak. Okay, so let's go ahead and get into this. And listen, I hope that y'all are having an amazing day. It is Thursday, February 22nd. I hope your mental health is intact before you get to dibbling and dabbling into all of this celebrity stuff. Y'all know what I say. Y'all know my motto. Okay, so let's go ahead and get into this press release. All right. So Wendy Williams is diagnosed with primary progressive aphasia and dementia. So let's get in here. Okay. Now, this is a press release released directly from Wendy Williams and her team. Um, on behalf of Wendy Williams Hunter, her care team is sharing this very personal update with her cherished fans, friends, and supporters to correct inaccurate and hurtful rumors about her health. As Wendy fans are aware, in the past, she's been open with the public about her medical struggles with Graves' disease and lymphodemia, as well as other significant challenges related to her health. Now, over the past few years, questions have been raised at times about Wendy's ability to process information, and many have speculated about Wendy's condition, particularly when she began to lose words, act erratically at times, and have difficulty understanding financial transactions. So in 2023, after undergoing a battery of medical tests, Wendy was officially diagnosed with primary progressive aphasia and frontotemporal dementia, also known as FTD. Now, aphasia is a condition affecting language and communication abilities, and frontotemporal dementia is a progressive disorder impacting behavior and cognitive functions. Now, they've already presented significant hurdles in Wendy's life. Now, Wendy would not have received confirmation of these diagnoses were it not for the diligence of her current care team, who she chose, and the extraordinary work of the specialists at Well Cornell Medicine. Now, receiving a diagnosis has enabled Wendy to receive the medical care that she requires. The decision to share this news was difficult and made after careful consideration, not only to advocate for understanding and compassion for Wendy, but to raise awareness about aphasia and frontotemporal dementia and support the thousands of others facing similar circumstances. Unfortunately, many individuals diagnosed with aphasia and frontotemporal dementia face stigma and misunderstanding, particularly when they begin to exhibit behavioral changes, but have not yet received a diagnosis. There's hope with every detection and far more empathy. The stigma associated with dementia will be eliminated and those affected will receive the understanding, support, and care that they deserve and need. Wendy is still able to do many things for herself. Most importantly, she maintains her trademark sense of humor and, receive, and is receiving the care that she requires to make sure she's protected and that her needs are addressed and she's appreciative of the many kind thoughts and good wishes being sent her way, all right? So this is the press release, all right? What I want to get into next is I want to get into this, this the, the clip that brought me to tears, right? I'm, I'm not sure if it requires a trigger warning or if it just made me emotional. I could never work in an elder facility watching people kind of deteriorate because that brings me to tears. And that's essentially what I witnessed in the clip that we are about to watch right now. I, I mean, I would just, I would be tore up. I would be no good. Shout out to the workers who can work with the elderly and people with declining health. As for me, it would just break me down and I would be emotional all day. I'd be a wreck. It's not for me. It's, it's not cut out for me. Um, but this clip definitely, um, it opens eyes to where, uh, you know, where Wendy is, right? But there is also more to be said about this. So without further ado, Thank you all so much for supporting the stream and for being here. Um, and thank you for hitting that like button if you haven't already. You tapped on the video, you might as well hit that dag on thumbs up button, okay? So let's go ahead and click here. Hey, roll us on your wrist, a plane giant. 
So yeah, this was that was that was so sad for me to see. That was really sad for me to see. Um, you know, you can tell Wendy isn't all there. Black China or Angela White, should I say, is appreciative and grateful of the friendship she has with Wendy Williams. Um, they've been friends since about 2020. Um, and, you know, all Wendy can do is, is, is state her name, you know, her maiden name and say that she's divorced and that he's got my money is, is what I heard through the, even though it was kind of slurred, you know, my real name is, is Wendy Hunter and I'm divorced and he's got my money. Um, that's really sad, you know? Um, it sucks that the headline associated with this clip is Wendy seen without her wig for the first time. Like, chill. Everybody gets old at one point or another. And really, honestly, a wig is a hat helmet. I used to wear them before I got locked, you know? A wig is a hat helmet, and you don't always feel like wearing one. And when you get older in age, there are things so much more important than your hat helmet and holding on to superficial beauty so that when you present yourself in the world, other people accept or receive you better. There are so many things that are more important than that. And Wendy is living with a lot of different things. So with that being said, let's go ahead and get into her health, right? And and, and her history and, and where we are now, what, what she's been diagnosed with recently, okay? So Wendy is 59 years old, if you didn't know. And since canceling her daytime talk show, she has kept relatively quiet about her well-being despite mounting rumors. We know that Wendy Williams wanted to come back with a podcast. Um, she wanted to be back on TV. One thing that really sticks out to me, and it, it really just echoes around in my head, is all I knew when I was a child is that I wanted to be famous. That's all I knew. Um, I won't elaborate why that bounces around my head, but she reached her goal. And um, she wanted to come back out and, and be on TV and, and do the podcast even more. And that was the initial direction of the upcoming documentary that we're going to be able to see on Saturday and Sunday, right? The 24th to 25th of February this year. Um, however, it took a turn when her health took a turn, okay? And so we're going to get updates within the documentary, Where is Wendy Williams? But until then, we can really just go down the timeline of her health, right? So she currently has a court-appointed legal guardian who oversees her money and her health to avoid the potential for her to be exploited due to her cognitive issues. And I, what I want to know from you is even with this releasing, the documentary de releasing, do you think that this is exploitation? I think that it's very subjective and I'm open to however you look at it, right? Wendy Williams is listed as an EP, as an executive producer on this documentary. So I, I see that social media is a bit in a tizzy um, and feel like she's being exploited with this. Other people feel like it's her telling her truth and she wants her truth out. And maybe it will raise awareness. Who knows? Put a one in the chat if you think she's being exploited. Put a two if you don't, okay? A one if you think she is being exploited. A one, if you think she's not being exploited with this or if this is her choice or she has the right to put out this documentary telling and showing her truth in her current state of health, right? So um, now Williams, uh, Wendy's sister, Wanda Finney, also uh, stated um, in a story that was published yesterday that Wendy is now in a wellness facility that specializes in treating cognitive issues. So Wendy revealed that she was diagnosed with grave disease in 2018. We know she fainted on live television in 2017. Here's a look at that if you don't remember. We go in a Halloween comp, uh, costume contest. We do it every year. So it was a lot of fun. Let's get started. Our first caress. That was very frightening to watch, especially live. Um, for a while, we've been witnessing Wendy's decline in overall wellness. Um, and, and here we are at 
I don't want to say the final stages, but it's clear that her health continues to decline. Okay. So Graves disease in 2018, she shared with us that she had Graves. Not that that's when she was diagnosed, but that's when she shared with us in 2017, she fainted on television. Um, it was 2013 that uh, Wendy actually shared that she had a substance abuse issue beyond alcohol. We all know that she struggled with alcohol, but actually um, struggling with cocaine and, and, and being very transparent and honest about how she was um, living in a halfway house. She was living in a, in a, in a, in a halfway house um, to try to get right off of, off of the cocaine, right? Oftentimes, Often, oftentimes celebrities of a Wendy Williams magnitude will have to be up and ready five days a week in a studio. Sometimes they do use uppers and sometimes they get stuck on things. It's, you know, it, it, it unfortunately is very common in Hollywood, right? And um, a sober house, I'm sorry, not a halfway house, a sober house, excuse me. Um, and so she told us that she was in a sober house in 2019, but she told us in 2013 that she was um, suffering from um, substance abuse, that being cocaine. Okay. And so the trailer to her documentary is just, um, it's sad. We do know that she fractured her shoulder in 2018. How? We don't know. There were a lot of rumors going around and I won't I won't rehash or dispel any of those because we can't confirm or deny. Um, but read in between the lines. And if you remember, you remember the rumors. Okay. And then um, in 2022, Wendy Williams let us know she revealed that she has um, lymphedema. And that is when she actually showed us her foot. Y'all remember when she lifted her foot up and showed us her foot and it was, you know, larger than the than a normal foot and seemingly disfigured right to to put it in the most nice way that i can so she's had a lot of different health issues um we went over the ailment now the addition of the two new ailments that have been shared with us now i want you to hear directly from wendy's niece what her niece has to say about the situation the documentary um, how they're able to contact Wendy, how one-sided it is. Um, and, and I think that there's a lot that we can learn from what's being said from her niece, but also what's not being said from her niece. So listen, I'm going to bring up this clip. It is eight minutes long. We're going to watch it in its entirety. Eight minutes isn't really that long, but please do me a favor. Take a second to make sure that you subscribe to the channel and also share this video with someone via text message, Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, your group chat, however you share videos um, and whatever you think is funny or informative or just a need to know for people that you, 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 you're cool with please be sure to share this video and definitely do me a favor and hit the like button. Let's get into Wendy's niece and her commentary on what's happening. Hey, thanks for letting me keep you connected and in the know with what's happening in the black world. Don't forget to smash on that like button for support and for more black news. Now we have an exclusive first look at a new documentary asking the question, where is Wendy Williams? After years of concern about the talk show queen, Deborah Roberts sat down with a member of her family for answers about her physical, mental, and financial struggles. We want to hear this conversation, Dad. Robin, so many Wendy Williams fans will be paying close attention. What started as a documentary, which Wendy Williams hoped would spark the beginning of her triumphant return to TV, ended in a heartbreaking expose of her mental and physical decline, a decline that involves a court-appointed guardian lording over her finances and her health decisions. Here. For 12 seasons, she reigned supreme on her unflinching, unapologetic daytime gossip fest, The Wendy Williams Show, with that signature greeting. How you doing? How you doing? How you doing? No celebrity off limits during her often scorching hot topics. Mariah, I don't know who you think you're fooling with this one. But this morning, the 59-year-old self-proclaimed queen of all media is herself the hot topic in a jarring new Lifetime documentary, where is Wendy Williams? From the start, we witness an erratic and shockingly thin Wendy. This documentary mm -hmm. is hard to watch. I know. 
very hard to watch. Yeah. I said I wasn't going to cry because I feel like I've cried enough over the last year and a half. But what people are going to see is a broken woman who has had the world on her shoulders for so long and just cracked. Alex Finney, Wendy's niece and goddaughter, now breaking the family silence. I feel like I've been living in this secret bubble for a very long time. <laughs> Lifetime producers witnessing low moments with excessive drinking, fits of anger. Go! Die! I have no idea where we are. And bouts of incoherence. I have no friends. You know how many people come out to support you? You know how many people love you? No, I don't. Some people are going to look at this and say, this is exploitation. She's being exploited. Mm -hmm. How could they do this? Right. But I will say this, first and foremost, my aunt is the executive Family. producer Everything. of so this documentary. And she word. said, now is the perfect time because I want to take ownership of my story. Our first caress. For many, Wendy's story took a dramatic turn on Halloween of 2017 when she collapsed on her show. <gasps> leading some to wonder whether Wendy, who openly talked about her health struggles and battle with alcohol and substance abuse, was in trouble. Her show went on. Two years later, another setback. I have been living in a sober house, and you know I've had a struggle with cocaine. Then a messy divorce, bizarre behavior, and long absences from the set followed. In early 2022, the Wendy Williams show was canceled. From six years old. All I wanted was to be famous. Oh. Months later, those documentary cameras began rolling with Wendy hoping to reveal a career reboot. But that's not what producers found. Did you have a liquid lunch? Because I came into your room and all of a sudden out of nowhere, I happened to notice one of your specialty items. So you think you're perfectly fine having as many drinks as you want? Perfectly. Okay, but I'm just gonna put it downstairs and keep it cool. Keep it there. Okay. Is she an alcoholic? So in terms of being an alcoholic, I don't want to categorize her because, you know, I'm not a medical professional. But what I can say is that my aunt has had some unhealthy habits when it's come to alcohol. They discovered a lonely, agitated woman. People will look at this documentary and wonder, where's her family? Right. How come family's not there saving her? Because family was shut out we would take responsibility with regard to guardianship and personal needs to ensure that she was healthy. And I'm not talking about her money. You put the money over here. A New York judge appointed a guardian to manage her life and finances. That action coming after her bank, Wells Fargo, claimed in 2022 court documents that Wendy was a victim of undue influence and financial exploitation. The court is going to look at the best interest of the individual. It will be based on the evidence that was presented as to how the family was helping Wendy Williams at the time. If it happens to me, it could happen to you. Overnight, Wells Fargo telling ABC News, this matter was conducted under seal. Any claims against Wells Fargo have been dismissed. There was talk that Wells Fargo got involved in this because mm -hmm. they thought either her son, Kevin Jr., mm -hmm. or somebody was taking advantage of her financially. Yeah. Do you know that to be true? So I personally have not seen family taking advantage of my aunt's money. I haven't. Have you ever taken money from your mother's account? Not, with her, not without her consent. Family members insisting their biggest concern is Wendy's well-being after noticing her apparent cognitive decline. During this filming, at what point did you know something was seriously wrong? Oh, right off the bat, when I saw her, she didn't have to say one thing. I knew that every cylinder is not firing the way it should. You are bigger than this. You are better than this. You are smarter than this. You are stronger than this. People around you getting paid, they're going to tell you stuff to make you feel good. So who benefits from this documentary? Is it family? Is it managers around her who are going to benefit from this? I think that's a question I can't even answer. I know that I will say this, family benefiting from this, no, I, I don't, that's... No. I just hope that the person that comes out of this victorious is my aunt. Her, do you think that she has a prayer of actually resuming a career? I think that, well, I know that um, in talking with her, she does hope to resume a career. And my hope for her is that she does 
whatever she wants to do that makes her happy and that stays in the bounds of keeping her healthy. The family feeling exasperated tells us that Wendy is in a treatment facility, though they don't know where. They say they have heard from her and she sounds much better. Where is Wendy Williams? The two-night documentary event premieres this Saturday on Lifetime. And guys, you can catch more of my conversation with Alex on Nightline tomorrow night, too. Wow. What a story. Where to begin, you, right? Yeah, where do you where start do you with this, Deborah? Yeah, yeah. It's, it's very, very difficult. But, you know, the courts have basically separated Wendy. So the family is not involved in her care, even mm -hmm. those who really have her, you know, best interest at heart. And, and so how do you deal with this when it is, you know, the state that is running her affairs. And to say she's the executive producer when you can see that in some ways she's not really in control. Does yeah. she have the capacity, yeah. the capacity to really to do, do that? that. Yeah. yeah. But yeah. they say she sounds much better That's and that good. she might be making a little bit of a recovery. So hopefully we will find out a little bit more later. But for this moment, they just don't know where she is. Well, great job by you and looking forward to watching that. Hi, everyone. George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube. All right, so what are y'all thoughts? It sounds like the family is, um, mm. let me see, how do I how do I prioritize my thoughts? It seems like what the family is trying to convey is that she might look a little, um, you might be hella concerned about what you see in the documentary, but she's getting better. Um, I think it's a terrible idea to let her to return to television me personally, right? But I'm not her, right? So um, it sounded like she said in one seemingly coherent moment, Wendy said, if it can happen to me, it can happen to you. So at the very least, it does seem like she wants to spread awareness about health and, and about what you could become susceptible to comparable to Wendy's habits. For people who use a lot of cocaine, drink a lot of alcohol, um, you know, having a banana pack every other day, um, all in the name of being propped up in front of the camera and just making sure you can show up. These are how the long-term effects can show up for you when you get older, as you age. So I think it's great that she's trying to spread awareness, even though I really can't gauge how often she is in her right mind. Um, but I can say that that clip with Black China definitely definitely made me feel some type of way, okay? Definitely made me feel some type of way. And, um, you know, Stickies, I really want to pass the question off to you. What do you think about Wendy Williams' current state of affairs? How does that land for you? Put it in the chat if you're here watching live. Um, and if you're chasing the bus, which means you're watching the replay, put it in the comments. I'm really curious to know. I want to ask you all one more time because I wasn't looking in the chat when I asked you all to vote before. Do you think that Wendy Williams is being explo uh -uh, exploited with the release of this documentary on Saturday? Do you think she's being exploited? Put a one in the chat if you think that Wendy Williams is absolutely being exploited by whoever. Her caregivers, it could be her family, it could be the court-appointed guardians. And put it too, if you don't think she's being exploited, and this is Wendy Williams' choice, because after all, she is the executive producer. She is the EP on this documentary. Do you think she has the capacity to even make that decision, you know, to be an EP, to make these choices and put this out? With Wendy, William, with Wendy Williams being so unwell, and all you can hear her say is, I want to be on TV again. I want to be on TV again. And I don't think, I don't think she quite understands that being on TV at any and all costs isn't necessarily a good thing. If I think if somebody could keep her on track and focused with really talking about health and wellness and how to survive being a person of a particular age and being a person who is living with certain illnesses or health ailments, I think that that would be great, but I think it would really take somebody that cares and that gives a damn about her and who is more so worried about keeping her well and keeping her protected and safe over money and a paycheck. If she was really going to stay focused on health and they can have someone coaching on the side, making sure she doesn't veer off and kind of get a little erratic and embarrass herself, 
I think that it could be a good thing if she makes her way back to television, but not just to shoot from the hip and just talk about whatever, because I don't really, from what I see, it doesn't really seem that she's necessarily all there or fit for it. So a one in the chat, if you think she's being exploited, a two in the chat, if you don't think she's being exploited, let me see what y'all are saying. I see ones and twos. It's, it's looking mixed. It's looking mixed. It's kind of looking half and half based on what I see in the chat. Okay. Um, someone said the clip with Black China tells you everything. Yeah, it absolutely does. It absolutely does. And it's, it's, it's really sad and disheartening. Let's revisit that for a moment. Woo. That thing is, is quite heavy to watch, to be completely honest. You know what I also found to be a little beautiful, um, beautiful and sad, but more beautiful than anything is that Black China said to, or Angela White, should I say, said to um, Wendy Williams is that, you know, you've held me accountable, you've held me to task without holding my past against me, which is something that we've seen. That's, that's like a motherly sentiment, right? Um, at least it should be, uh, or parental sentiment. Um, and that is something that we we clearly see that Black China is not getting that from her mother. Black China is not getting that from Tokyo Tony. And to think that she got it from somebody, that 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 type of connection, and they built this friendship, and that Wendy trusts her, and she's Black China is clearly very delicate with Wendy and understanding and empathetic and 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 all of that. They actually have a friendship, right? Um, I think that that's beautiful. I think that that relationship is is really beautiful, and it's nice that Black China was able to find that in someone, although she did not get that from her own mother. And it's nice that she's still visiting Wendy, even though Wendy might not be in the capacity that she was when she met her in their relationship and their friendship, whatever you want to call it, started. She is still dedicated to visiting her and sitting with her and spending time with her. That is so, um, that's so precious to me. It really is. Um, this is sad. <laughs> This is so sad what's going on with, with Wendy Williams. And thank you. We, we got almost 400 people here. Please make sure that you all hit the like button and also take a second to subscribe to the channel for more Black news and celebrity updates. Um, this is what it is. Is Wendy Williams being exploited or not? I think it's the question of the day. And also just what are your overall and what are your general thoughts about Wendy Williams' current state of affairs? I really want to hear from you, Stickies. Okay. Let me know what you all are feeling about it and where you land with it. Um, just to let you know, we are actually in the middle. Last night we did watch, uh, we watched half of Who the F Did I Marry? And we're going to watch the other half later today. Okay. So if you want a live reaction and a watch, um, please make sure you subscribe for that. Because again, we cover celebrity stuff, but we also cover viral and trending topics and things that are going on on social media. So I definitely thought that my next video was going to be the second half of this. It's, you know, it's a 50 part series that this lady did based on marrying some sort of um, pathological liar. Um, and it's a 50 part series. We got through parts one through 25 last night. And tonight we're going to do parts 26 through 50. And it's going to be a lot shorter than it was leading up to 25. So there's a lot that we're going to be covering on this, on this, on this channel. So you definitely want to make sure you hop on my buzz and buckle in. If you are a new sticky, if you are a new subscriber, welcome to the channel. I'm so glad to have you on my bus. We definitely have a lot of fun. There's a lot of um, a, a lot of stuff that we talk about over here, and um, and there's a lot of things that that we cover. So hopefully this gave you all of the information that you needed. All right, as it pertains to Wendy Williams, I do appreciate y'all just being in attendance today. Shout out to y'all for supporting the channel and coming through a little bit early. All right, y'all know I usually show up. And it is late at night. It's usually after 9 o'clock when I go live sometime between 9 p.m. and 1 a.m. I'm over here on the East Coast, Baltimore, stand up. So if you want to support the channel, if you want to see other things, social media um, coverage and commentary, 
um, reporting on celebrity news and commentary on that as well. Definitely make sure you support the channel by hitting that subscribe button. You also want to make sure you hit that thumbs up button. You can also support the channel by sending a cash app. Okay. It is appreciated. It is absolutely not required, but anything you do send is greatly appreciated. It goes right back into the channel. Okay. So these were pretty much my thoughts. These were my thoughts on Wendy Williams. It made me really sad. It made me extremely sad to see this clip. Um, I definitely shed a couple of tears and I had to stop myself from shedding tears in the midst of reporting this to you literally in real time because um, Wendy Williams, as messy as she was, she was very authentic. And as a, um, in a male dominated industry, anybody sitting behind a microphone or using a microphone to broadcast is a male dominated industry. Radio is a male domi dominated industry. Podcasting is a male dominated industry and especially syndicated television. So Wendy made the crossover and really thrived and even did better than some of the men, a lot of the men in a male dominated industry. And we can't let that go without um, mentioning OK, so and then she made the crossover from radio to syndicated television. And that is not easy. It's not easy. Name me somebody who crossed over and had such a long standing reign from radio to television. It really just doesn't happen. And then alone for it to happen and for that to have came through a woman like Wendy Williams, say whatever you want to say about her personality and and Whitney Houston cussed her out and total cussed her out. Beyonce read her down. There were lots of people ready to, 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 to pull up and beat Wendy's ass <laughs> based on her commentary. And I mean, listen, let's let's not let it go lost that Wendy Williams is kind of like an OG troll. She said things that she knew was going to get under people's skin. She peddled rumors that she knew were not true in order to get ratings, in order to trigger her subject matter. And I'm not praising that tactic, but think about how many trolls we have present day. Wendy Williams crawled so that y'all can walk, okay? So it, it just, the, the terminology outrage is social currency. Wendy Williams was one of the first people, and then to be a black woman at that, to truly use outrage as a strategy outside of the reality TV realm, which was the early talk show realm. I call the early reality TV realm the Jenny Jones the Jerry Springers, the Ricky Lakes, and even Oprah back in the day. A lot of y'all don't know she cleaned up her brand. But the same energy that Jerry Springer had on his show is the same energy that Oprah and, and Jenny Jones and Ricky Lake and even Jenny Jones had to go to court because she got so messy with outraging people on purpose that she had two guests on her show and they left and one guest killed the other. And she was brought into court to testify about that. So when I tell you I've been studying Wendy Williams and her journey and not necessarily admiring her or, or taking on her personality, so to speak, but really how she trailblazed and really made it possible for other women to sit behind a microphone and to do what they want to do, I have been studying it, okay? It, it, it goes really, really deep. Let me know if y'all remember back in the day when the talk shows were extremely wild. Jenny Jones, Ricky Lake, Oprah, all of them. Put a four in the chat if you remember that time. And if you're too young, put a five or just put a goddamn baby emoji. Let me know. But I had an amazing time sitting here with you really just um, talking about Wendy Williams and giving y'all a little bit of history on the industry and how impactful she is if you don't let her personality and her antics overshadow the real progress she's made when it comes to women in media, period, okay? Thank you all so much for being here. Again, if you are interested in getting into who the f did I marry and you wanna watch the second half of it with me and the rest of the stickies on the bus later on this evening, definitely make sure you subscribe because we will be watching the rest of that later on tonight, okay? So shout out to everybody in the live chat who is here right now. We had almost 500 people here. Um, shout out to all of my moderators. Shout out to all of my channel members in particular. I loves y'all down. Um, shout out to come get this commentary. I'm on the sticky bus listening on my break. Okay, shout out to you, Kiva. Thank you for being present.
All right, y'all. I'm going to let y'all go. Enjoy the rest of y'all day until I see you all later on this evening so that we can get into the mess, the mess that is who the f did I marry? It's definitely a present day soap opera series, and it'll definitely help you escape whatever it is that you're going through and maybe even help you reflect on some of the red flags you may be missing in your life. I have not forgot about the Monique stuff that we need to talk about. Trust me, I'm going to get to it. Um, but there were other things that came first. Shout out to my new subscribers that are subscribing now. And listen, on your way out, please be sure to subscribe and thumbs up or down. But most importantly, please be sure to think critically and independently, regardless of what you hear from me or anybody else. Y'all be sure to stay beautiful, black, and blessed. And I'm going to catch y'all in the next video. Okay? Deuces. Hey, roll us on your wrist or but that's it. If you want to catch more of my commentary on black culture or vital and trending information, be sure to subscribe by hitting that little circle in the middle of the screen, or I'll catch you in one of these rectangles to the right in another video. I'll see you there.